Attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal End Compliance, a full service corporate securities and business transactions law firm. Today is the continuation in a LawCast series discussing SEC disclosure requirements and in particular the 341 page Regulation SK concept release and request for public comment issued by the SEC on April 15, 2016. Although many aspects of disclosure are important, I believe none are quite as important as the financial information and future prospects of a company. Regulation SX contains the actual financial disclosure requirements, and item 303 of Regulation SK contains the narrative discussion requirements related to those financial statements and the financial information in general. This management discussion and analysis, called MD&A, not only delivers an explanation of the financial statements, but provides a unique opportunity in SEC reporting for a company to illustrate its distinctiveness among a sea of other fish. MD&A is intended to provide a narrative of a company's financial statements and future prospects through the eyes of management. The Regulation SK concept release clearly shows the SEC propensity to use a principles and materiality approach for MD&A and to steer away from a recitation of the financial statements themselves. The SEC also recognizes and discusses the concerns that a company has in presenting forward-looking information and in particular 10b-5 liability if the plans do not turn out as disclosed. In recent years, Management has used MD&A to not only explain the financial statements prepared in accordance with Regulation SX, which in turn is based on U.S. GAAP, but rather to also explain away those financial statements. Approximately 90% of companies use MD&A to provide non-GAAP financial metrics to illustrate their, their financial performance and prospects. As an example, EBITDA is a non-GAAP number often included by management in MD&A. The SEC is pushing back with the proliferation of the use of these non-GAAP numbers and is considering strengthening Regulation G, which governs the use of non-GAAP numbers and requires, among other things, a reconciliation to the GAAP number. This topic has been the subject of a multitude of recent trade journals and articles. There are very valid reasons for using non-GAAP numbers, such as EBITDA, which is an established indicator of a company's performance and ability to meet financial obligations. Likewise, certain non-cash balance sheet items, such as derivative liability related to options, warrants, and other convertible instruments are confusing and often are never realized in a way that has an actual impact on a company's financial performance. However, there can be a slippery slope with a company cherry-picking GAAP and non-GAAP numbers to create a picture of financial stability that may not be accurate. I hope that in reviewing this area, the SEC is not myopically stuck on the purity of its view of GAAP, but considers that if 90% of companies find a need to go outside the rules, perhaps the rules themselves need some adjustment. I'm securities attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal End Compliance and producer of LawCast. Should you have any questions about today's topic, please visit securitieslawblog.com and lawcast.com or contact me directly. Inquiries of a technical nature are always encouraged.